In this video, we will introduce secant lines and tangent lines. So I'm going to begin by letting f of x be 3x squared. So I'm going to look at an example function. And I'm going to draw a rough graph of this function. So I'm going to draw some axes. And then the rough graph. So this is an upward facing parabola. I know it's a parabola because it's a quadratic. And the leading coefficient is positive. So I know it's an upward facing parabola. Okay, so an upward facing parabola, the vertex of this happens to be the origin. And then I'm going to plot one of the points when x is 1. So when x is 1, I'm going to label this 1, and then the output is going to be f of 1. And if I wanted to, I could plug 1 into this function, and I would see that the output is 3. But for the time being, I'm going to keep it labeled like this. So. The goal of this video is to start to think about how we can find the slope of this function f, this curve, at a particular point, like 1 comma f of 1. So we know how to find the slope of a straight line, but now we want a way to find the slope of a curve. All right. so. Let's think of an idea for this. So my idea is going to be to use what are called secant lines. And secant lines are lines that connect two points, two points on a graph. So let me show you what I mean in the picture. So let's say I were to look at a slightly further away x value, like 2, and look at that point on the graph. So I get this point over here. I could connect that point with 1 comma f of 1 with a straight line. And I get a straight line like this. And this is a secant line. A secant line is a line that connects two points on a graph. So, of course, the secant line isn't exactly as steep as the actual curve at the point I'm interested in, 1 comma f of 1. Like, the actual curve looks to be a little bit flatter than this secant line is. So to make this estimate a little bit better, I could move that point when x is 2 a little bit closer. Like, maybe I move it to, to 1.8 or something like that, a little bit closer. If I were to move it a little bit closer, I could form another another secant line, a slightly better one. So this green line is another secant line. And as we move that point closer and closer and closer to where 1 comma f of 1 is, eventually it'll approach a line like this that kind of right at that point matches how steep the graph is. And it looks like that's going to be something like that. So this orange line is what we call the tangent line. That line lies tangent to that curve. All right, so let's look at an example where we start to uh, estimate the slope of this tangent line. So I'm going to be looking at my function, 3x squared, and I'm going to find the slope of the secant line between the point I cared about, 1 comma f of 1, and in part a, that point, and the point 2 comma f of 2. Okay, so I want to find the slope, the slope between these two points. So if I use my slope formula, so the change in y over the change in x, which is going to be f of 2 minus f of 1, subtracting the y values over, subtracting the x values, 2 minus 1. f of 2, if I plug 2 into this function, I get 3 times 2 squared, 3 times 4, which is 12. If I plug 1 into the function, I get 3 and then over 1 on the bottom, which is 9. So that was the slope of this first gray secant line I had drawn. It's 9. So now let's get a better estimate. Now let's find the slope of the secant line between 1 comma f of 1 and 1.1. Let's get really close, and f of 1.1. So now my slope is going to be f of 1.1 minus f of 1 on the top. That's the change in y over. 1.1 minus 1 on the bottom. That's the change in x. I've gone ahead and worked out what this is already. 
after plugging into my function and subtracting and dividing, and it's 6.3. Now let's make it even better. Now let's get it between 1 comma f of 1 and 1.01 comma f of 1.01. So now my slope is going to be f of 1.01 minus f of 1 over 1.01 minus 1. And this ends up being 6.03. So it seems like these values are getting pretty close to 6. I want to show you what this looks like in the online graph in Calculator Desmos. All right, so here we are in Desmos, and we have our parabola, 3x squared. And I've formed a secant line connecting 1 comma f of 1. And right now, the other point is at 2 comma f of 2. So I can click and drag this other point. And notice what happens is I click and drag it and move it closer to the other point. Uh, my secant line is getting to be better and better and better approximation. And once it gets super, super close there, super, super close right at that point, I have my tangent line. All right, so returning to the notes here, the values that we were getting for the slopes of the secant lines, these seem to approach 6. They seem to approach 6. And that is what we are going to estimate as the slope of the tangent line. So we're not absolutely sure it's 6. It's just an estimate. Later in this chapter, we'll talk about how we can figure out that it is, in fact, 6. All right, so I want to end this video by recapping the key ideas from this section. So the first is, remember in the previous video, we talked about average velocity. And the formula for average velocity is really similar to the slope of the secant line. In fact, it's kind of exactly the same. So the average velocity is, in fact, the slope of the secant line when my function is a position function. And with that in mind, when we talked about the instantaneous, I'm just going to read instantaneous velocity, and we got that by using the average velocities on a smaller and smaller time interval, that's analogous to what we were doing with secant lines. We were doing secant lines on a smaller and smaller time interval to get the tangent line. So the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent line. And then the third key idea is to get the true slope of the tangent line, we will do this by making our interval infinitely small. And to do that, we'll need to introduce the concept of a limit which is the heart of this chapter. And we'll really return to that idea of getting the slope of the tangent line in section 2.7 and 2.8. But first, we'll build this framework of a limit. All right, in terms of our goals, we finished the last goal for this section, talking about how we can use the slopes of secant lines to estimate the slope of a tangent line.